suppose. I've got to do a video talking about ozone. I've had a few pe uh, people request that I, I follow my uh, posts about protein skimmers and ozone up with um, some sort of instructional video. Um, I do science and engineering and stuff for a living, so for me it was kind of a pretty much natural progression. So I'll, um, I'll talk about my protein skimmer, which you can see in the background there. Now my phone doesn't want to let me flip the screen around for some reason. But anyway, um, yeah, so we'll talk about that. Now I didn't start with a big one. I started off with a, with a much smaller one, but it still did a thousand gallon pond. I mean, I'm not talking clear, I'm talking better than tap water. Absolutely crystal clear. Fish look like they're hovering sort of clear. Now, my small one started off with just PVC. Um, I built it in an afternoon. It was 90 millimeter PVC. I know my friends in the States, um, there'll be some sort of imperial equivalent, maybe three and a half inches or similar, but basically um, you need a size. If you're gonna start, you need a size that you can go and buy a Coke bottle or similar and um, basically heat shrink a Coke bottle onto PVC. That's that's a good way to make a start. Now, I've got one down here on the ground, which I'll, I'll, I'll go over in a minute, but. But basically, even a small one, it's not about quantity of water, it's about the quality of filtration. So in that case, basically, even only filtering eight, 900 litres an hour sort of thing through a, a small protein skimmer with ozone, and even a small ozone uh, ozonator or, or ozone generator, um, maybe even 80 milligrams per hour, as long as you dry the air, and you can buy proper dryers or you can just um, make your air pump pump through uh, rice. I've used rice, you know, four litres or a gallon of rice in a container to dry the air and the and it makes a lot more ozone out of the same little machine. Now a small protein skimmer with 80 milligram uh, oz ozonator or ozone generator has it made our pond a thousand gallons absolutely crystal clear and that was only my mock-up one. My, my Basically my my experimental one that I built in an afternoon for about 50 bucks Australian so maybe 35, 40 dollars American. So I'll, uh, I'll talk about this protein skin behind me now, this big one, um, it's, I went all out because, well, that's what I do, <laughs> so I'll, um, I'll talk about that one. Um, basically, I, I put a big air pump on it, it's, um, I think it's a Resun 20, it does about what, 17 or 20 litres a minute, something like that. Um, now, it's, it's pushing through four um, air stones, so basically the, the white silica um, glass ones or ceramic ones that you can buy, they're about $14. Um, I think they're about uh, four or five inches long, something like that. Now, this big one behind me, it's actually got four of them in the bottom and one big air pump. And basically, that air pump pushes the air through two separate um, ozone generators. So if you can imagine, it goes in air and goes past an arc inside and it adds an extra electron creating ozone. Um, that ozone then goes down through, you can see just uh, over on the, line, on the wall there, you can see the black lines going along. Now those black lines are um, uh, their four millimeter irrigation poly. Now you can't use um, normal air, airline, you can't use silicon uh, because ozone eats it. So basically everything from the ozone uh, generator onwards needs to be that four millimeter poly or five, it's, I think it's 532 ID. So basically to get it into your skimmer, you just drill a five and a half millimeter hole and, and wedge it through. So, you know, you just push it through, it's pretty tight. But basically, um, I've got four separate airlines going into the skimmer, and then they go down to a air stone. And in the bottom of the protein skimmer, basically, there's just a grill. Anything you like, a um, bit of PVC, uh, you know, the top of a drain, doesn't matter. Just something to keep the air stones off the bottom so that the water coming out of the protein skimmer uh, doesn't have um, too much ozone in it. Basically, the ozone rises up, and you can see that froth cup just behind me there. So basically the ozone rises up, um, on its way up there, it literally consumes the rubbish in the water. So color, tannins from logs, um, algae, it'll, it'll, it'll eat whatever it can. So basically it's an oxidizer. Um, what it does, it goes looking for something to eat. So it literally consumes things, so color and whatever. And that's why you can't just put an ozone air stone into your pond. It has to be in a separate chamber. Now that chamber could not have a lid like the one behind me. It could just be, you know, a PVC, um, a PVC uh, reactor as, as such. So basically it could be open topped or similar where somewhere where you can pump the water into and you can bubble the ozone up and then basically you just need somewhere where the ozone can go looking for something to eat. And in most people's cases, it will consume uh, ammonia, it will consume excess food, it will consume uh, nitrites, it will consume algae, it will consume parasites, anything that's in that water that you don't want to be there, it'll eat. So uh, it's, it's, really, it's really pretty special when it comes to filtration. So. But anyway, uh, I'll, I'll have to um, go to a, 
another video because I can't flip my screen around. So see you the next one. Cheers. Bye.